Another example for this section, uh, problem 63, chapter 5. Here we have this mechanism. Uh, this bar is moving down on this slider with the velocity of v, which is given to feet per second. We have another bar, which is pinned to the first one at point B. And at the end of this one, we have this roller, which is in contact with this incline all the time. So it's gonna move upward, right? It's gonna move along this incline. And the question is, uh, what is velocity of point A? Uh, this one is, um, I would say, it's more challenging than the previous one. So it really deserves to spend like 15 minutes on this. Uh, try your best to solve this one. <clears throat> you can pause this video and come back in 15 minutes. I'm gonna assume you did that. I have no other options. So, um, uh, we need to find the velocity of A, right? So what we can do, let's see what we know about this bar. We know the velocity of B is downward, right? Because this bar is moving down and B is a part of that bar as well. So the velocity of B is gonna be downward and it is two feet per second. <clears throat> and we are trying to find the velocity of A. Uh, probably some of you thought to write the relative velocity between B and A. Let's do that and see why it's not gonna work that way. So velocity of A is equal to the velocity of B plus angular velocity of this bar. Let's say the angular velocity of it is omega. So omega cross BA, right? We can write this equation, this relative, uh, relative velocity equation between A and B because A and B, both of them are on the same rigid body, right? And omega is the angular velocity of that rigid body. But in this equation, we have a lot of unknowns. So this is a vector equation, right? It's gonna have components in the i direction and also components in the j direction. So in general, this is uh, two equations. Because it's a vector equation, you can split it down to i and j components. So at the end, we are gonna have two equations. But how many unknowns we have here? Velocity of A, what we know about velocity of A? Nothing. We don't know the magnitude of it, we don't know the direction of it. So it's gonna be a vector, it can be in any direction. Right? So this is two unknowns. Velocity of A is gonna have a component in the I direction, component in the J direction, and we know none of them. So we have two unknowns here. Velocity of B, we know it, we know the magnitude and direction of it, so we know everything about this. Omega, we know it's gonna be in uh, counterclockwise or clockwise, it doesn't really matter. We know it's gonna be in the k direction. So we know the direction of it, but we don't know the magnitude of it. So we have another unknown here. <clears throat> BA, this vector is known, right? We know the direction, we know the length. So we have um, no unknowns here. So in this equation, we have three unknowns, but two equations. So we are not gonna be able to solve it. Mathematically, it is impossible. <coughs> so what we should do, um, we need to find more information about this bar. And from there, we might be able to find some of these unknowns. So uh, if you look at this mechanism, the only other piece of information we have here is C is going to move along uh, this incline. So we know the direction of the velocity of C. It's gonna be aligned this one, but we don't know the magnitude of it. But it is a piece of information, right? Mathematically, it means we have another equation over there. So velocity of C, the magnitude is unknown, but we know the direction of it. 
right? Or in, I can write it as this too. Velocity of C as a vector is equal to velocity of C, the magnitude, times the direction, right? And the direction means the unit vector along this. So if I say this is my x, y coordinate, velocity of C as a vector is going to be the magnitude uh, times the unit vector in that direction, which is cosine of 15 in the i direction plus sine of 15 in the j direction, right? Or in other words, component of the velocity in the i direction is going to be vc times cosine of 15. Component of this velocity in the j direction is going to be vc times sine of 15, right? Now, um, because we know this, if I relate the velocity of b to c, I'm going to be able to find velocity of c and also omega. How? Let's write the relative velocity equation between b and c. So, velocity of c is equal to velocity of b plus angular velocity of the rigid body that b and c are on that rigid body, which is omega, cross bc. Okay. <clears throat> Now look at this, we have only one unknown here, we know the direction of it, right? We don't know what is Vc, the magnitude. Vb, we know everything about it, omega, we know the direction is k, but the magnitude omega is not known. And Bc, we have everything about it, right? So in this uh, vector equation, we have only two unknowns, Vc, the magnitude, and omega, the magnitude of the angular velocity. So mathematically, we should be able to solve uh, to solve this equation. Let's uh, write everything down. Velocity of C is magnitude times the direction cosine of 15 in the i direction plus sine of 15 in the j direction is equal to velocity of B, which is 2 in the j negative j direction, so negative 2 in the j direction, plus omega cross bc, let's write it down here. So I'm gonna assume omega is in counterclockwise direction, so positive omega k, cross product to bc from here to here. Uh, this angle is 30 degree, right? It is given. <clears throat> so uh, bc is gonna be three inches divided by 12 to make it fit. Uh, 3 divided by 12 um, times cosine of 30 in the i direction times sine of 30 in the negative j direction, right? So it's going to be 3 divided by 12, I'm writing bc, times cosine of 30 in the i direction, negative sine of 30, In the j direction. Now I can do this cross product, right? We have a cross product here. So uh, it's going to be negative 2 in the j direction that we had from velocity of b. Then this cross product k cross i is j. So I'm going to have plus 3 divided by 12, 1 over 4 times omega times cosine of 30, again, k cross i is j. Uh, k cross j is negative i. We have another negative here. So positive plus one-fourth of um, omega sine of 30 um, in i direction. Now we have a vector equation here, right? This is equal to this. If I separate i and j terms, I'm going to get two equations. And the unknowns are going to be omega and vc. So in the i direction, we have, in this side of the equation, we have vc cosine of 15.
uh, in the other side of the equation, uh, we have one fourth of omega sine of 30. So it's going to be equal to one fourth of omega times sine of 30. The sine of 30, you know, is one half. In the j direction, in this side of the equation, we have vc sine of 15. In the other side of the equation, we have negative 2 here and uh, 1 fourth of omega times cosine of 30, right? Two simple equations and two unknowns. We have a system of equations here. So you should be able to solve this. And if you do that, you're going to be able to find omega and vc. And if you do it correctly, omega should be 10.93 radian per second. And vc is going to be 1.414. Feet per second. Okay. And the important point for us is finding this omega. Why? Because after finding omega, I can put it back in this equation to find velocity of A. After knowing omega, look at this equation. We know velocity of B, we know omega now, and we know what is vector B A. Just by simply putting that in this equation, we are going to be able to find velocity of A. So let's do that. Velocity of A is equal to velocity of B plus omega cross product BA from this to the other one. So it's going to be equal to velocity of B is negative 2J. Omega, we figured, is going to be 10.93 in the k direction cross product to ba again ba similar to bc but in the opposite direction it's going to be 3 divided by 12 feet and the direction of ba is cosine of 30 in the negative i sine of 30 in the j direction so um, negative cosine of 30 into i direction plus sine of 30 in the j direction okay now we can do this cross product like what we did before and then add this negative 2j to it and that's all i'll let you do the math part uh, the math part velocity of a at the end will be negative 1.3 Six six i negative four point thirty seven j and the unit is feet per second and of course the magnitude of the velocity is going to be square root of one point three six six squared plus four point thirty seven squared which will be 4.57 feet per second.